today I'm bringing you guys the ultimate guide to camera tracking inside of After Effects. I'm gonna make this as easy as possible to understand for you guys, just so we can get right to the points and cover the easiest ways. All right, so inside of After Effects here, we have this clip from the new Lil Durk All My Life music video. So if you don't know what 3D camera tracking is, what it does actually is scan the scene, it reads the camera movement, and then it recreates it on top of it. So you can bring images in, set them to 3D, and they will be exactly matched to the scene. So for example, if I right click on here, go over to track and stabilize and track the camera, we'll have this tab pop up right here. Now, what I recommend doing is going down and opening the advanced tab of it and paying attention to the average error. Now, when this goes through here, as you guys can see, we have an average error of 0.69 pixels. Anything below one is amazing, just absolutely great. And you guys will see all of these tracking points that are set on here. And if you want to make them bigger and easier to see under track point size here, you can scale that up just like this. So what I recommend doing, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can highlight certain areas that you want, like this, for example, right click and create a null in camera, or you can just go right here and create a full camera, which we're going to try right now. So boom, I hit a full camera. As you can see, it created a camera right down here. And now what we can do is right click, go over to new, create a new solid. Let's call this test, hit enter. And then if we go to this 3D box right here, we can turn this on. And what this is going to do is it's going to track it to the scene and make it 3D. And if we watch it here, boom, it's tracked to the scene just like that super easily. And that's a really simple way to track and everything worked perfectly. But if things do not go smoothly and you have your red square or whatever going all around the scene, flying around, camera track is not done well. And I'm going to show you guys a couple ways you can get around that. So deleting this camera, if we go back into our video, first way to get around this is see right here where it says detailed analysis. If you have an average error that's over one, you might be fine. But I recommend doing it one more time by clicking detailed analysis and just checking what the average error is for that. Boom. So if we do detailed analysis you guys can see there are so many more track points than before like look how many we have here so if you do have a complicated track scene and there's a lot of movement i recommend playing around with detailed analysis if you want to have it a little bit more accurate as well under solve method here where it says auto detect if you know it's going to be a mostly flat scene or a tripod pan i recommend clicking on one of those and moving on to the next trick here guys as you guys can see there's a lot of texture in the scene there's a lot of areas on the roof for the track to grab onto if your scene is not like that for example if your scene was just the trees and the sky there's not a lot of areas of texture to grab onto. Now, what you can do to get around this is if you go over to effects and search up unsharp mask and drag and drop that on your scene, you'll have amount, radius, and threshold. I'm going to turn up the amount and then play with the radius as well. And as you guys can see, that's going to make everything so much more textured. Like look, look at all the little areas of grain and all that on the building before and after. There's so much more areas for the track to grab onto. And now the trick for this is you don't just track the scene now. What you have to do is you want to right click it, pre-compose it, hit the second one, move all attributes into new composition and turn off open a new composition boom just like that and then you want to go ahead and track this here by right clicking track and stabilize and tracking the camera once you have your scene tracked what i usually do is i duplicate this pressing Control d i go inside of this i copy it I delete this and I bring it back in and I delete the unsharp mask. And then you're just going off of the tracking data of the second one here that has the sharpness mask on it. And then you're applying your effects and whatever to this one here. Another way that you can get away with the track is if you have certain areas, let's say for example, where the main part of everything isn't very textured, but you have this one area that's super textured, but the track is just not latching onto it, for example, what you can do is you can go over to your pen tool here. And let's say we want this area right here to be tracked to. We can just cut out this area just like this. And then you guys can add unsharp mask this as well if you do want. So what you do once you have it keyed out, you go over and pre-compose it same as before. And then what you would do is you would just go ahead and track this keyed out area now. So I honestly always find myself either going between the unsharp mask, the keying out a certain area, or both of them combined. And I feel like if I mix all of those in together, I never have a track that fails. It just takes a lot of messing around with. And also as well, make sure that you're using rotoscope too. So boom, as you can see there, there's so much tracking information in this one area. Yeah, 0 0.53 pixels. So that's even lower than before. And those are all the tips and tricks I use to get the perfect track every single time. And after a if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe because I'm going to be uploading every single day for the rest of the month. Peace.